March 7th of this year, Representative Walter Jones of North Carolina introduced House Resolution 107 into the United States Congress. The resolution states, Whereas the cornerstone of the Republic is honoring Congress's exclusive power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution. Now therefore be it resolved by the House of Representatives, the Senate concurring, that it is the sense of Congress that, except in response to an actual or imminent attack against the territory of the United States, the use of offensive military force by a president without prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress violates Congress's exclusive power to declare war under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution. Jones intended his resolution to express the sense of Congress that the use of offensive military force by a president without the prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress constitutes an impeachable high crime and misdemeanor under Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution. Why does President Barack Obama deserve to be impeached? Here are four reasons. Doing little or nothing at all will result in either, even greater deficits, even greater job loss, even greater loss of income. One, the Obama administration not only endorsed the 2008 bailout policy, the funds from which did not go either to homeowners or for taxpayers' protection, but rather to the consolidation of private banks, many of them in Europe. There was no investment of any meaningful type in the physical economy. There was no protection of the American people, but rather an illegal commitment made on behalf of private banking institutions to commit the American people to paying a debt that the American people did not accrue. The trillions of dollars that were pledged to the private banking sector are backed by the assets belonging to the American people. This combines to represent the most clear violation of the principle of the general welfare in the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. I also want to be clear about what we will not be doing. The United States is not going to deploy ground troops into Libya. U.S. boots are reportedly on the ground in Libya. Two, the Obama administration conducted a war in Libya which it claimed it did not conduct with American forces that it claimed were not involved for the purpose of overthrowing and then executing a head of a sovereign state who was held in the custody of insurgent forces financed and militarily supported by the United States, France, Britain, and other NATO countries. This was done despite the fact that the United States was neither attacked nor threatened with attack by the nation of Libya. Only the Congress, not the President, has the authority under the Constitution to declare war. But the Obama administration believes that it has that authority. Do you think that you can act without Congress uh, to and initiate a no-fly zone in Syria without congressional approval? The administration recently asserted that its actions are above the laws of the United States in an exchange between Obama's Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, and Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. Uh, our, our goal would be to, uh, to seek international permission, and uh, we, would, we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this, uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress. Uh, I think those are issues we would have to discuss as we decide what to do here. What I heard you say is, we're going to seek international approval and they will come and tell the Congress what we might do. The Obama administration thus does not believe that the Congress has the exclusive power to declare war and accordingly the president should be impeached. Let me welcome uh, Prime Minister Cameron of the United States of New York. Uh, obviously there is an extraordinarily special relationship. Three. The Obama administration sides with the imperial power of Great Britain, and proudly so, in what has been called the special relationship. Through that special relationship, the United States, as a result of the false intelligence advocated by Tony Blair, claimed that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and conducted a preventive war against Iraq in 2003. Preventive war was declared a crime against humanity by the Nuremberg Statutes of 1947. But now, on March 13th of this year, Barack Obama and David Cameron declare their intention to seek the removal of the Syrian regime of President Bashir al-Assad, a regime that has shown no intent of threatening or attacking the United States Republic. This shows Obama's intent to continue a policy of war, for the commission of which 
the Nazis were sentenced to death at Nuremberg. If President Obama intends to finance, arm, or in any way militarily support the rebel factions against the president of Syria, he has a constitutional requirement to approach the Congress for a declaration of war. Four, President Obama has committed us as a country to a policy of indefinite warfare, including on American soil. On December 31st, 2011, Barack Obama signed into law the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act, which includes provisions that state the Congress affirms that the authority of the President to use all necessary and appropriate force pursuant to the authorization for use of military force includes the authority for the armed forces of the United States to detain covered persons pending disposition under the law of war. When Congress defined such covered persons, exempting U.S. citizens from the language, they were rebuked by the Obama administration, which told them to remove U.S. citizens from being precluded. Thus, as a result, U.S. citizens can also be detained by the U.S. military indefinitely without due process or civilian trial. This now allows the United States military to arrest and detain without trial American citizens who are deemed enemy combatants. It abrogates the Constitution of the United States in the Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendments, the right of the people to be secure in their persons against unreasonable searches and seizures, and that no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentiment or indictment of a grand jury, and that the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury. All of these rights have been abandoned by the United States under President Barack Obama. Further, the President asks the country to believe him when he says that he will not use his power of the executive towards the arrest of U.S. citizens pursuant to the NDAA of 2012. However, the executive branch has already ordered the execution of an American citizen in November of 2011. The Obama administration has already assassinated an American citizen, Anwar al-Awlaki, who was never tried in absentia, but was simply indicted by a secret court, according to the executive branch, who then ordered his assassination, a murder which also included that of his son, a 16-year-old boy, and a family friend. Considering the president's willingness to assassinate American citizens, are we really ready to entrust them with the power to indefinitely detain U.S. citizens in the course of so-called combat? After all, our Constitution promises the trial of all crimes, except in cases of impeachment, shall be by jury, and such trial shall be held in the state where the said crimes shall have been committed. Now is the time. If we choose to surrender our republic to the machinations of dictatorship for fear of external threats, terrorism, and other amorphous enemies, then we do not deserve the republic which was given to us by our forefathers and promised to us based on the pledge that it is a republic of the people, by the people, and for the people. Consequently, as a republic belonging to us, we are not accountable to the president and the Congress. They are accountable to us. And should the president presume dictatorial powers Regardless of the state of war that he may claim we are now in, he must respond to our demands to protect American citizens from unauthorized illegal detention by the military and to annul this National Defense Authorization Act of 2012. And if he does not do so, then he deserves to be impeached immediately. But if we say nothing today, where will we be tomorrow? yourselves what are you doing in this time of great challenge what are you doing to unlock minds go to infowars.com and prisonplanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting-edge information